So today we're going to demonstrate how to do the neurological assessments. The first thing we're going to assess is our level of consciousness. And so I would assess that she is awake and alert. And as I've been interacting with her, I'll be assessing if her verbal responsiveness is appropriate to the situation of which it is. And then the next thing I want to assess is her orientation. Tell me your name. Amalia. Where are you? Baptist. And the time of day? Afternoon. So I'd say she is oriented times three to person, place, and time. Okay. The next thing I want to assess is her muscle strength. And so I'm going to assess her upper extremities and her lower extremities. And so I'm going to ask her to grab hold of my fingers and to squeeze them. And I'm testing to see if her muscle strength in both of her upper extremities are equal on both sides and strong. Then for the lower extremities, I would have, can you push up against my hands? And can you push down against them? Push up, push down, and then with their feet, push up against my hands, and push down against my hands. And then you can also do in the upper extremities, push against me, and now pull against me. And I would say her muscle strength is strong in upper and lower extremities. I also want to test her sensation, so I would ask her to close her eyes, and I'm going to ask her to tell me, or to point to where I'm touching you, okay? Left hand, right hand, left foot, right foot. And so then I would say her sensation is intact in both her upper and lower extremities. Okay. Then the next thing I would want to assess is her cranial nerves. Okay. So the first cranial nerve that I want to do is olfactory. So it's cranial nerve one, olfactory, and the way that I test to see if it's intact is I say ask the patient to close your eyes and then without her noticing what I had I would put the item up under her nose and tell her to tell me what you smell. Mint? Mint. So let's say oh, cranial nerve one, olfactory intact, able to smell mint gum. Okay. The second cranial nerve is, is optic and so she can, I would take my name badge and I say can you read this? Jennifer. So optic nerve two Cranial nerve 2, optic, is intact, able to read small print from 12 inches. The next cranial nerve is cranial nerve 3, which is ocular motor, and it actually does has two tests that we need to do for that one. One is PERLA, which stands for pupils equal round and react to light and accommodate. And the second one is EOMs, or extra ocular movement. And so for PERLA, I have a pin light, and I put my hand here, and I'm going to slowly bring the light in from the side and watch to see if her pupil constricts. And it does, and so I want to make sure I do both sides. And I've noticed that her pupils are equal, round, and react to light. The accommodation part of Perla is, can you focus on the tip of my pen light? And I'm going to slowly move it in towards you, just keep looking at the end. And as I move it in, I'm watching her eyes to see if they converge, and to see that her pupils constrict, and then they dilate back when I move it back and her eyes do accommodate, so her perla is intact. The second one is extraocular movement, and again, she needs to focus on the end of my pen light, and I'm going to move the pen light in different uh, parts of the clock, the odd hours of the clock, follow it with your eyes and not your head, okay? And as I'm doing this and watching her eyes, I'm looking for any tearing or jerking of her eyes, or if she complains of pain or anything like that. So, cranial nerve 3 is intact, perla, and extraocular movements. Extraocular movement is also cranial nerve 4, which is trochlear, and cranial nerve 6, which is abducens. And so, we tested both of those with EOM. Next is 5, which is trigeminal. And again, I'm going to use my cotton ball and have the patient close your eyes, and you're going to tell me where I'm touching you, or point to it. Forehead, chin. Cheek. Left cheek. Okay. So, cranial nerve uh, 5, uh, germinal, intact, able to feel sensation. And just make sure that you test both sides of her face because you can have loss of sensation on one side or the other. So, make sure that, the, that you test both sides. Okay, now we can go to uh, cranial nerve 7, which is facial, and that's facial strength. And so, can you pull out your, cheek, your cheeks like this? 
and so cranial nerve 7 is intact, able to blow out cheeks against pressure. Cranial nerve 8 is acoustic, and so I would stand on each side of her. It's going to be hard for you to see me on that side, but I'll stand on this side. I would whisper something behind her. Red. And then I go the other side, but I'll just lean over for here. Swimming. So I have whispered something to her, and she was able to hear both. So I'd say cranial nerve 8 acoustic intact, able to hear the whispered word. <clears throat> cranial nerve 9 is glossopharyngeal. And so I can either do one of two things. I can give her something to taste or something to swallow, and I'm going to watch how she swallows. Okay, so that cranial nerve is intact, able to swallow or taste, whichever test you do on that. Cranial nerve 10 is vagus, and that is speech. And we've been conversing, and so then I know cranial nerve 10 is intact. She's been able, she can speak. Cranial nerve 11 is accessory muscles, and so I'll put my hands on her shoulders, and I'll ask you to shrug your shoulders. So cranial nerve 11 accessory intact, able to shrug, uh, shrug the shoulders. And then the last cranial nerve 12 is hypoglossal. And the way you test this is you have the patient stick your tongue straight out. And I want to see that she is able to protrude her trunk midline. It doesn't deviate to one side or the other. And so that would be all the cranial nerves. And so then the last part of the neuro assessment is you want to see the gait of the patient. So can you stand up right here? And obviously I put non-slip shoes on her. And I want you just to walk a few steps that way. And what I'm looking at is to see that her gait is rhythmic and smooth and steady. Okay, now you can sit back down. And that is the end of the neuro neurological assessment.